Yeah, it's all of the above. What I, what I want people to know in an unfiltered way that doesn't go through the media, who am I in a 3D dimension? Who am I? What makes me tick? What is it that I hope to do for the country? And it's all centered on a core of conviction. It's the animating principles that my parents taught me, but it's also the animating principles of the country. It's interesting because a lot of people don't know that I came from a middle-class background, but our family lost virtually everything overnight. When I was 12, I had had to get a job just to be able to buy my clothes and, and buy glasses. My mom did the best she could, but she just didn't have the money. Right. And, and during the course of that time, it's really embracing the responsibilities of adulthood, which is a, a part of the United States that seems like is lost today. But people learn that I spent some time working on a kibbutz in Israel. I spent time working in Alaska cleaning fish and salmon. I, then I worked my way through college. I became a federal tax lawyer. And over the years, my husband and I built a very successful company from from scratch, but I didn't forget the challenges of growing up in a tough situation. My husband and I took in 23 foster children over the year. We raised them. We started the first charter school in the United States for at-risk kids, and then I became an accidental politician. Uh, I, I had no intention of going into politics. I was an activist trying to get rid of the political correctness and the dumbed-down standards in public school that our that our children were dealing with. And um, I became very successful at that, went to the United States Congress. I led a movement called the Tea Party Caucus, and I brought 40,000 people to the United States to oppose to, to Washington to oppose Obama, Obamacare. Right. And I think what people see in this book is that I have a lifetime record of being a consistent, faithful, constitutional conservative. I've lived this core of conviction, and that's what I intend to do as President of the United States. I think it's time we have... A mom in the White House with a core of conviction who gets the United States and who gets how, how to put this country back on the rails so we can be prosperous again. It's a uh, Republican candidate for president, uh, U.S. Representative Michelle Bachman. And, and uh, Representative, I'm wondering, uh, in this process, I mean, you started out, you, you certainly were the Tea Party favorite. You still might be. Um, but you started out the process, you know, you're well into the double digits. You were one of the leaders in Iowa. You won the straw poll. I mean, things were looking great. What is it, do you think, and, and, and I think that I know, that part of it, at least from your perspective and my perspective as well, you and I are very like-minded. Um, part of it's got to be the media just hammering you over and over. But what is it about the debate process that can take somebody like you or somebody like our governor, Rick Perry, or somebody like you know anybody who was the front runner at some point, and one debate or two debates or, or a couple of appearances can take you from 23 to 30% down to 6 or 7? What, what is it that happens in that process, and, and how do you keep your head up and say, I can keep on trying to do this? Well, because I, I firmly believe that we're going to, I'm going to be the candidate who will win in Iowa, the very first primary state on January 3rd. And I How important that, is that? I, I think it's very important. That, that's, the, that's the first primary in this process, New Hampshire second, South Carolina third, Florida fourth. But I think pe what people have been going shopping, as they should. They've taken a look at all of the candidates, and they've, they've found flaws and surprises. One thing people have seen with me is there are no surprises. I've been the consistent constitutional conservative. We put up a website called nosurprises2012.com cool to highlight the differences <laughs> between the candidates, and that's what my book is about, core of conviction. I think people are going to come back home on January 3rd and say, Michelle Bachman, of all of the candidates in the race, she's right on all the issues. She's demonstrated a fire, an ability to inspire crowd she speaks to the issues i think i've done very well in all of the debates that have been that have come i don't have a, a major gaffe in any of the debates and i think people are going to see i am that candidate who's the whole complete package we don't have to settle in this race i can debate barack obama and right. win and hold him accountable it's core of conviction my story that's the name of the book it is u.s representative michelle bachman uh, michelle i want to get into the issues in a second but i want to get this jimmy fallon thing out of the way i know that you've been talking about this nonstop, and we'll do it briefly. I've interviewed Jimmy Fallon. I think he's a nice guy. Um, I think that he does a pretty entertaining show. His band are a bunch of blind Obama followers. The, the leader of the band, uh, this guy, Amir uh, Thompson, but he goes by Questlove, 
Um, he he um, is somebody whose picture on Twitter is him standing with Barack Obama. That's who they are. It was horribly disrespectful and disdainful that they played lion ass b word when you walked out i didn't know the song i watched you when you were on that night you didn't know the song you have to wonder if the guy whose name is on the show late night with jimmy fallon do you think he knew going in they were going to do that and and what has your conversation been with him since that have you spoken with him personally I've spoken with Jimmy Fallon personally since then, and he yeah. was very apologetic. He was horrified. I have no doubt that he was not aware of this, but the band was, and the band twittered it out twice before they did the Bragging song. about it. Yeah, bragging about it to their 1.7 million followers. Here's my point. Had this been Michelle Obama who had walked out on that stage, had they played this song for Michelle Obama, I guarantee the president of NBC would have crawled on his knees to Mrs. Obama and would have begged for forgiveness. They probably would have fired the band. Right. That didn't happen in my case. And, in fact, it was kind of a joke for them. And I think that that demonstrates the difference. When Don Imus said something, he was forced off the air. They, they, they were ridiculous in the way that they treated right. Rush Limbaugh and misconstrued what he said. When it comes to conservatives, it seems that we have to pay a very heavy price if we get anything wrong, according to the doctrine of political correctness. But they can say, the left can say anything they want right. to us. That's what's wrong. Well, then, well, it is. I want to interject this. You and I are about the same age. I grew up watching Johnny Carson. Can you imagine Doc Severinsen doing that and Johnny Carson not just blowing a gasket? I mean, it is late right. night with Jimmy Fallon. His name is on that show. This is the Joe Pag show. If you and I say something right now that is untoward or racist or out of line or, or misogynistic, we're going to hear about it, and, and we should. It's my show. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think that he can play dumb here. Well, I, Jimmy Fallon, again, he was very apologetic. He invited me to come back on the show. He right. said, I hope you know, I didn't know anything about this. I feel terrible about it. And he's done everything that he could to make amends with it. Um, and I did get a letter of apology from the senior vice president, but I told Jimmy Fallon that I believe that the president of NBC should issue an apology. He didn't. Yeah, it's the core of conviction, my story. That's the name of the book. It's uh, U.S. Representative Michelle Bachman. When, when now got a hold of you, when the National Organization for Women got a hold of you to support you in the whole Jimmy Fallon thing, what did they say? Uh, they didn't get a hold of me. <laughs> of course they didn't. It because, didn't happen. Right. Because, I mean, you're right, Representative. This isn't about, um, it, this isn't about race. It's not even about gender. This is about right versus left, period, end of story. And they attacked you because you're a conservative. That's right. And that's why, again, read my book, Core of Conviction. This is the decency level. Like you mentioned with Johnny Carson, we never would have seen this level of indecency during that era. Now we're seeing it. I think we need to, we need to raise the bar and raise the standards. That's a part of core of conviction. As President of the United States, that's what I want to do. Is yeah. We will be a successful nation again if we raise the standards and act like a first world nation rather than, than a banana republic. That's what Barack Obama is leading us down the road to a banana republic. Yeah. I want us to be the premier economic and military superpower once again. You, you have um, uh, you're being heard right now uh, through much of Texas, and you will later on today. I'll play it again, and you'll be heard throughout just about the entirety of the state and beyond. Um, immigration is a huge deal here. Immigration is a major deal. Rick Perry said something wrong. You don't have a heart if you don't give people in-state tuition. And he went down from 30-something percent to 7. Newt Gingrich in the last debate talked about if you're here 25 years and you're established and if you go to church, then you should be able to stay. You have said that you have to look at the, the, the different um, situations when it comes to illegals. Let me just ask you point blank. When it comes, because everybody on that stage at every debate, uh, uh, Congresswoman, everybody wants to secure the border. Everybody wants to take away the alleged magnets, except for, you know, save for what Perry said about this or what some others have said about that. What do you do with those who are here illegally now? Do we send them all back? What do we do with those who have already broken through the border? Let's say you become president, you close the border, you're successful yeah. at that. What do you do with those who are here now? Yeah, well, let me answer that. First of all, I have the highest grade of any of the candidates on illegal immigration dealing with it. Newt Gingrich has the lowest grade. It's because he wants to legalize 11 million illegal. Well, many were surprised by his stance on that. I, I interviewed him a few weeks ago. I didn't get that from him when I interviewed him, but, well, no, because but in the debate we got it. Right, because he knows that that, won't, that position won't sell. He said in the debate that he's prepared to take the heat, but obviously he's not, 
because he signed a letter in the Wall Street Journal that he printed that said he was for President Bush's amnesty program. He said it less than a year ago to a Latina convention called Americano. So that's what his position is, and now he's trying to deviate and say it isn't. That's a tremendous inconsistency. I've been consistent throughout. I do believe that you enforce the laws on the books for deportation. In a debate in September, I was talking about order of sequence right. of deportation. You right. first deport, because it's 11 million at least illegal aliens that we have. Well, a lot of people are bringing up that quote, and, and uh, that makes more sense what you just said, the yeah, order, order of who of you deport. Well, it, you, seemed, you, it seemed to you, be that you were saying those who were here for a long time should... Uh, we should take a look at those cases in a different way. You're not saying that. You're just saying that the order that you should deport them. It's the order of deportation. Right. You first get rid of the people with the most egregious offenses, the felons, the narco-terrorists. Right. They go out first. And because you can't literally overnight send 11 million out, I'm talking about order of deportation. That's what's disingenuous about what the the Newt Gingrich camp is trying to do. They're trying to say that that um, there's hypocrisy on my part by that quote. They're completely misconstruing their, the quote. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have the highest grade of all of the candidates right. in dealing with Im illegal immigration. I have been 100% consistent on this issue. Illegal immigration costs us $113 billion a year. That's $1,000 per household. I'm the only one of all of the candidates that signed a pledge that I will build a fence the first year I'm in office. Plus, I'll go further than that. I will get behind legislation that will do away with anchor babies in the United States. That's one of the biggest magnets. That you would have to have. change the 14th Amendment, right? Well, we don't have to change the 14th Amendment. What we, all we have to do is put forth legislation uh, to, to make it illegal, illegal, and we can do that. I've talked to constitutional scholars, and we can put forth legislation that I would get behind because we should not be granting automatic status to women who, who break our laws, come in, use our hospitals, give birth. That baby gets an, an, a, a legal status as right. an American, and then welfare benefits are ne immediately attached to that baby. That's wrong. We have to stop that, and I'm the only candidate in the race that will stop that, and I'll make English the official language of the United States government. And these are all very conservative things. In about 30 seconds, and I know, I know how busy you are, I really appreciate the time. It's U.S. Representative Michelle Bachman, Republican from Minnesota, running for the Republican nomination for, for President. Uh, Core of Conviction, My Story is the book. Um, do you get rid of a bunch of departments to, to, to cut back on, and I know we don't have much time, but yes, Department of Education, Department of Energy, Department of Com I mean, which, which departments do you get rid of? I get rid of uh, education, EPA, um, energy, interior, all of those departments, because what I want to do is go back and revisit Lyndon Johnson's welfare state that right. he recreated and dismantle that welfare state because we can't afford it, we're broke, and it's bringing us down as in the United States. Read about it in my book, Core of Conviction. Right. It's a great read. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of humor. People will see a, a positive story about how we can get the country back, but it's also my life story that represents the core of conviction and why I believe that I will be the best candidate to, to beat Barack Obama. I can't wait to take him on in debates and hold him accountable on stage. And I will be that candidate because we need a mom in the White House with right. a core of conviction, and that's what I'll do. Core of conviction, my story. Uh, last question, how do you keep your energy up? You're always happy, you're always smiling, you always have a lot of energy. How do you do I it? I drink a lot of water, and I have a clean conscience. <laughs>